So yeah, here we go. Hello? Yeah, it sounds. Well, hello, hello everybody, and thank you for, for being here in this, in this panel. Well, this panel is, is about one thing. It's about how technology can change the world, how technology can make a better world, how technology uh, can help people to live better how technology ma is able to make okay. a, a better world for everybody. So this, tech, this, this panel is around one idea. We want to, to share with you one idea. <laughs> it's this, uh, the, this hackathon that we have uh, created for you. And this hackathon is a hackathon that we call Hacking for Something Better. I mean, the idea that we have is that using technology to change the world is possible. And using technology, we can do better things and we can do good things, and we can do much more better things. So that's why we define this panel, and we want to share with you different ideas. Uh, this panel is calling, uh, uh, his name is Hacking for Something Better, and let me introduce my, my colleagues in, the, in, the, in this panel. First one is Jose Pablo uh, Suarez, and uh, Jose Pablo is going to talk to us about social inclusion. I, I, will, I, will, I will introduce him later. Uh, my other colleague is, is Jose Picom. He's going to talk to you sí, about cierto, the human cities. And <laughs> we will tell you why we're going to talk about the human cities. Um, Jose Picom is there. Vicente Traver is, um, is there. Vicente is going to talk to us about um, health and, and well being and how technology can people to have a better health. And just um, Juan Quemada. Uh, he's going to talk us about how technology can help people with better education and better education to get much better employment. So this is, this is the, the, the panel that we have defined. We have the, the panel, as we said, the, the uh, hackathon for something better. And what we want to propose to camp campuseros, and there are thousands of people working there, uh, we send them different challenges how can technology can improve different things and just uh, by Friday we will have some winners of this hackathon and we will see different solutions, different applications, different ICT uh, apps in order to, to talk about and in order to look for solutions for this kind of problems. So if we can go over the presentation, please may we okay, okay. This one. Here is the presentation. Well, as I told you, this is, this is, the, this is the, the presentation about uh, what's happening in the world. This is me. This is Alberto Andreu. I'm the Corporate Sustainability Manager of Telefonica. And we want to talk about, uh, as I told you, how technology can change the world. Well, le let me tell you one thing. As we told you, just to start and just uh, uh, quite a quick, quick, quick introduction, we tell you technology can change the world. And probably technology is in the center of the solution of all the main problems that we have to face in the planet in the next, probably in the next 10 years, 20 years, or whatever. Uh, and let me tell you what. Let me tell you wh what's happening. Well, if technology is in the center of the problems of the planet, we have to understand which are those problems that we are talking about. In order to talk about the problems, I would like to remind you all the things regarding two Millennium Development Goals. Just a question, a quick question for you. H how many of you know about the Millennium Development Goals de decided or defined by the United Nations? How many of you have information about that? One, two, three, four. Well, I think that you don't have so much information, so I, have to, I, I, I want to talk to you about it. Well, in the United Nations 10 years ago, defined some goals that the planet should be able to improve to make people 
live better. And they define eight main objectives. Um, so you, you, you can see the objectives. So eradicate the poverty, achieve universal primary education, to promote gender equality, to reduce the child mortality, to improve maternity health, to combat uh, uh, AIDS, to ensure the environmental sustainability, and to look for global partnerships to promote the welfare of people. So uh, this uh, program launched for uh, United Nations two years ago is, is about to finish. It will be finished in the next two years. And now the United Nations has defined the goals that we get and the, the, the goals that the planet got from the, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in this uh, time that the program has, well, has yeah. last. So the first one is about to eradicate of poverty. As you can see, the world has done, has done a lot of things, but the real thing is that one in eight people is still living hungry. So there is a lot of and a lot of things to do. The second objective about the universal education is true. The prim primary education now is in the 90% of the kids, but the problem is that still there are more than 60 million people, or around 60 million kids, with no education at all. So, we have a lot of things to do. Talking about the third objective, to promote the gender inequality, well, mainly we're talking about girls. Girls are probably now better than 10 years ago, but the real thing is that women discrimination is still on the public agenda. And this is an impending issue. We've done a lot of things, but we have to do much more things for, for girls. More, regarding to reduce child mortality, the world has done a lot of things. Today, there are less kids that day every day, that die every day, but the real thing is that there are more or less seven million kids that are in risk of child mortality in the, every day. So this is the reality. More reality, the uh, maternal health, the maternity health. It's true, we are doing better. We've done a lot of things, but there is a still thing spending. And if you see only one of two women have health care when they want, when they're going to have their babies. So there's a lot of things to do. There are still things to do. More objectives uh, about health, thinking about AIDS or thinking about mal malaria. For instance, there are only two examples. We've done a lot of things but there is still a lot of things to do. If we talk about um, environmental topics, the planet has done a lot of things, but the real thing is that more or less 2.5 billion of people don't have enough uh, conditions, health conditions to make their life better. And just for finishing, in order to talk about the global partnership, it's clear that business can be the engine of the future. There is a lot of things to do. So this is the picture. This is the conclusion. This is the, the result of this first program launched for uh, United Nations 10 years ago. We've done a lot of things, but it's still a lot of things to do. In order to look for new goals, uh, United Nations um, appointed a, a, new, a, new, a, new, a, new, a new program. And they call it uh, the New Sustainability Goals. It was an incredible summit in Rio, and uh, Rio defined the new goals for the planets. These are the 2020 goals defined by Rio. And the things that uh, Rio defined it was about new jobs, about energy, about cities, about food, about water, oceans, and disasters. And this hackathon is going to talk about that. It's going to talk how technology can increase and can make better jobs, how technology can, for instance, produce more human cities, or how technology can reduce the divide in order to different social inclusions, food, what, or, or whatever. These are the new goals, and I want to show you the new goals. So there is a lot of things that the planet has done, and there is a lot of things that we have to still work on. And for instance, talking about jobs, education, and employment, as you can see, today, 1.3 billion people earn less than $2 per day. These are no decent jobs, 
And the real thing is that probably technology is in the center of this solution. Think about, for instance, green jobs. If we talk about cities, the real thing is that half of the humanity, more or less 3.5 million people, now is living in a city. And in the next 15 years, almost 60% of the population will, be, will, will live in cities. So how the cities will be more uh, live cities, how the cities will be more human. And as you can see, there is a lot of challenge to do so. We talk about later about that. If we talk about health and safety, think about today in Europe, the 35% of the total public spenders are devoted to sanity and to health care, to public health care system. How technology can reduce the cost, how technology can export health solutions in the developing countries. And think about all these figures. 6.9 million kids are about to die. So as you see, we've done a lot of things, but there is a lot of things still to do. And what about uh, probably what is in the base of everything? In the base of everything, in the base of everything, there are one thing which is clear, democracy and transparency. In the next panel, we'll talk with our colleagues with uh, Connected Nations about how democracy is in the base of a better world of ever. And think about one thing, the countries which haven't developed the Millennium Development Goals are those countries with more violence and with more inequality all over the world. And just for finishing, transparency and accountability deficits. Think about this global crisis that we are suffering probably is regarding to a lack of transparency and a lack of governance systems. So probably technology is in the center of everything, as I told you. And just to finish this, technology, as we told you at the very beginning, is in the center of the solution. And technology can change the world. So that's why we are launching to Campus Eros this idea of this hackathon for something better. This hacking for something better, how we can find solutions to reduce these gaps that we present to you. So technology can change the world and technology is in the center of the solution. And in my understanding, you guys and the Campus Eros who are working in the other, in the other area, in the, in the other space, they are in the center of the solution too. And just for finishing, let me tell you one thing. The challenge that we have, the challenge that we companies have, the challenge that, that a company like my company has, is a, a double challenge. How we can make that the business could be much more social oriented, doing good things, but doing the right and the proper things. And just in the contrary, how the social topics could be much more business oriented. I mean, if we put in the market social products, social services, social solutions to reduce some gaps, probably the world would, buy, would be much more better in the future. And in our understanding, the link, the people who can link both worlds, the business world and the social world, probably are the social entrepreneurs. And most of the times, what you, or what we call sometimes the geeks, probably people using technology are the people who is able to link these two worlds that today sometimes and most of the times are separate worlds. That's the reason that we launched this Hacking for Something Better, this hackathon that we call Hacking for Something Better. So we launched during the last two months some challenges to different campuseros, challenges around health, challenges around education, challenges around human cities and challenges about social inclusion. We will see the results next Friday. And uh, with, this, uh, um, with this conference, we want to promote and we want to ask you for join us to this hackathon. That's all for my part. And I'd like to thank you very much. And now let me introduce uh, to my, my different colleagues. My colleague, um, Jose Pablo Suarez, He's going to talk about social inclusion, how technology can give us different solutions to reduce the inequality. Whatever you want. Please. Thanks so much. Jose Pablo. Thanks so much uh, for your kind introduction. So um, 
Well, what you want to move you there, want? that's okay. <coughs> uh, I would like first to roughly introduce uh, in a few words what for us is social inclusion, right? Uh, social inclusion means those policies and tools that get people involved. It's a kind of participation, right? So, so far, technology has not taken too much part in social inclusion. But since five years ago or so, uh, we have seen how companies, administration, and university is getting more involved in this situation. Um, well, I must point out how strong is a company of like Telefonica that has married since 10 years in Spain or abroad with university. University to improve and to push down whatever project in social inclusion, right? Such is the case of our university in Canary Island, Spain. We are close to Africa, but we are already Spain. Um, we have there, we ha I'm hosting there the Catra Telefonica, where we have the specification on accessible technology. We are promoting those projects on how technology, how my colleagues said, can improve, can integrate people. So, we encourage projects focus on people in the most vulnerable cases, such as social integration, immigration, high dependence in people, people from remote geographical territories, like we are in Canada, but not also with. Whatever part isolated in the world have the same problem. How can I get involved in the mainland? How get involved in the internet? How can I access services, resources, and so on? We believe that we cannot say a uh, cat corner to social inclusion. We must go ahead with foundation, and Telefonica is doing that. My colleagues are a proof of that, and our people are a proof of that. So please, developer, coder, whatever people interested in supporting some of this challenging idea, my colleagues say, go to the Hiking for Something Better webpage. We have there like uh, 30 challenges for you to solve. This is a question that get involved, put whatever you want, whatever you see, and how to improve. And this will be awarded with very nice prize too. So, very last sentence, please stick around, hug for something better, and thanks so much for attending our presentation. So, please, this is the next step for my colleague. Thanks so much. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Jose Pico from Spain. I'm an architect, and I'm going to talk about uh, the human city idea. Okay, before that, Alberto, he has been talking about um, the technology in our cities. When we used to talk about technology and we used to talk about cities, we used to talk about smart cities. But the thing is that we like to talk about the human city. When you mix technology and person and citizens, you get a human city. What is, what is, a, a really, what, what is really a, a human city? Human city is a city thinking for the people. The technology is just the brain. It's just the, uh, the, the system that allow to work these big machines. But we have to think the city for the people because they are the heart. They are the feelings. They are the emotions. And there is no way to have a great city if you don't have happy people in your city. You don't get a good relation, a good community. You don't get like a humanistic emotion like a big community working together, feeling together, we lose our cities. And 
As Alberto told us, more than 50% of the people right now are living in on the cities. In 20 years, it's probably it's going to be around 75%. We need the cities. Of course, we need the technology. Of course, we need the social media. Of course, we need the web, the internet. But we need a place to have a relation in between the people, to share ideas. When we talk about innovation, we talk about change the, idea, the ideas in between different peoples. And we need a physical place to do that. Here, right now, we are in, in a campus, in a place, in a physical place, all together, talking about different ideas. And when we finish here, we'll probably get new things to do. Right now, we are working uh, in, in, in that area and hacking for something better. And there are a lot of challenges that young people are doing to get better places to live on. Uh, right, we're talking and we're uh, working in, a, in, a, in one real nice challenge. It's called Smile Spaces. And it's how to get in an application all the different sensors we have to find in a city. Physical sensors, like for the atmosphere, for the uh, traffic, for the movement. Also, hur urban sensors, like the places where you can feel good, like a garden for the kids, a pedestrian streets, a, um, bicycle uh, streets. But also, we need something very, very important, is the social sensor. One citizen with one smartphone is a social sensor. You can know how they think, how they feel, how they want to do the things. You probably will get better cities, better cities. And that is what is a human city. Thank you very much. And the next speaker. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. My, my name is uh, Vicente Traver, a professor at the Polytechnic University of Valencia, uh, researcher from 15 years in the, in the world of uh, ICT and, and health and well-being. And uh, well, uh, I will be talking next uh, Friday in the Leonardo stage uh, around uh, health and well-being, about uh, such challenge. But uh, today we were invited to talk uh, during the panel to address the different uh, uh, goals or sustainable development goals that the United Nations are, are well, have already launched just to, to promote uh, a better society. Uh, at this stage, uh, well, I'm talking about health and well-being uh, at, all, uh, at all ages, where uh, some, in some cases we, we say, okay, health and well-being are concepts extremely different, and that's not true. We, we can imagine now, we can say, okay, now, now we, we are talking about co the combination of social and health factors, but according to the definition of health of WHO, the uh, World Health Organization, uh, almost uh, 60 years ago, uh, to be healthy is not only the absence of uh, any, any disease, it's just a state, it's a feeling to, to, to be happy. So that's uh, be very important. And uh, well, uh, Andreu stated that a lot of money is being invested now, now in health. I would say not exactly. It's being invested in medicine. And we are doing bad because we are using plasters because we were wrong. We need to invest a lot on uh, health promotion and disease prevention. And that's something that we can uh, start just now, for example, from the hackathon. If you say, hey, I'm not a doctor, I'm just uh, an IT guy that I like computers, I'm too small because I'm not the Ministry of Health of my region to, to address any topic, uh, I, I like also to, to use always the, the sentence of Dalai Lama that if you consider that you are too small, please consider what uh, can uh, do a mosquito during a, a night with you. I mean, so uh, a mosquito can uh, make you... <laughs> Uh, a nightmare during, during a dream, so please uh, take into account. So uh, we, we don't need also to, to address 
large and big uh, changes uh, well for sure that now if we are talking about uh, health technologies everybody is thinking about apps and, and that's true and the apps is one of the solutions where uh, our people in the hackathon they are working on, on, on that working with iPad and so on and they are very successful applications like uh, for example Philips develop a, a nice one where only with the camera of the iPad they can uh, measure the Hair rate and the brief respiration rate also, but uh, this is for developing countries. But uh, for example, a very successful application is happening in, in Ghana, just with a normal uh, mobile phone with SMS, where they are using that just to check with a code if the drug is false or not, because this is a real business and a real problem that it's uh, costing a lot of lives in in Africa. So we need. Uh, you are uh, present, you need to add input for the, for the hackathon. And we consider that the, the, uh, the IT is not the problem, but it's a, really a tool to, to solve and to address this, uh, this uh, well, all, but especially this, this goal that, uh, that's to have uh, uh, health and well-being at hotels. That's uh, why we need. Okay, and now the turn is for uh, Juan Quemala, please. Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Juan Quemada. I am a professor at the Technical University of Madrid, and I've been working for many years in education and also in the use of, of technology in education. Uh, because, uh, well, this is a, a topic which really has a huge impact. If we go to the <laughs> objectives of the millennium, which Alberto has presented, um, in, in the area of, of uh, education, we go to two main objectives. Mm? Our fixed objective is education. Mm? How can we educate better? Mm? And how can we do it with the use of technology? So, basically, I mean, if uh, <laughs> we have had during the last year in, in all educational institutions a lot of introduction of technology. We had learning management systems, mm? uh, and <laughs> they became collaborative then they became socially, and finally, I mean, we have reached the MOOC, the massively open online courses, which is really a breakthrough, uh, because this, this transforms education into a massive enterprise. Mm? MOOCs are really uh, a point today uh, which will be <laughs> overcome, and so we have to think in what is after the MOOCs. Mm? So if you would like to have uh, objective for hacking for something better mm, in the area of technology, I think that the main line will come what <laughs> we, how can we develop applications which really go beyond what we have today. Mm? And today I think the, the, <laughs> the, the point, the latest point, the latest technology is this massive education uh, <laughs> process which are obtained via these massive open online courses. Mm? So think on that, and I think that this can be a good uh, point. Uh, the other dimension of technology is the mobile ecosystem. And there you can probably have also a lot of innovations and improvements, because uh, mobile is probably uh, the, the device which all these people, which uh, Alberto has mentioned, these many millions of people, which uh, need education because they don't have access to it, or which want a better education because they would like to obtain better jobs, hmm, to obtain a higher income as they deserve and, and uh, progress in their lives. Hmm. Uh, then in those regions, in regions where education is, is highly, is, is rarely accessible, mobile will be for sure the terminals they will have. Hmm. So I think these are the main two components that the new applications hmm, for providing education have to to, to to consider mainly, but of course this is a very rough summary. And then we have the second objective, because we are speaking about education for employment. And how can this education lead to a better employment or even to create employment in regions where it doesn't exist? Well, then we go mainly, I think, to the content dimension. How can we provide um, content hmm, knowledge to those people uh, or skills hmm, or, or things they help them better in, in their future employments hmm. 
and this is a very difficult issue. I think that probably we should educate for creativity. Creativity is one of the main uh, challenges we have today in education. Mm? Nobody knows well how to educate for creativity. Mm? Because, I mean, the world is changing so quickly that we must create new solutions, new knowledge, new uh, everything. Mm? Must be somehow innovated or improved. Mm? But we have also to provide knowledge mm? which is usable in the context, in, in, the, <laughs> in the area uh, where those people are living. Mm? And so, well, they will have probably to know about technology, everything which is needed for the digital economy, which is the latest disruptive uh, element we are all uh, faced with, mm, is needed. But not only the technical skills, coding, uh, but also design, uh, new processes, new <laughs> uh, community managers, new type of, of social uh, skills to move in this world. I mean, everything in all the areas, mm, <laughs> in the part which the digital society and the digital economy needs. Mm? Uh, also, the green uh, works uh, need a lot of, of uh, have a lot of attention and need a lot of people and many more things. Mm? Well, and as I have not much time, this is all from my side. So please, if you would like to improve and uh, <laughs> move the, the state of the art in, in this uh, hacking for something better activity we are having here. So I think you should consider probably these challenges because uh, they will surely uh, bring us to new possibilities in education. Thank you very much. Thank you, Juan. <laughs> Thank you, Juan. Well, just for uh, some open questions, I, I would like to, to, some, to make some questions to my colleagues. And of course, I'll open the questions to you guys. Um, probably, uh, we are just in the middle of a revolution. I, I think that we are in the middle of a revolution. Uh, think about um, 10 years ago, music was one kind of business. Cinema was one kind of business. Entertainment was one kind of business. Even more, media was one kind of business. 10 years later, today, Music is completely different. Cinema probably is completely different. Media could be completely different, and it is completely different as a sustainable business model. And probably uh, literature, uh, books, or whatever, changing so fast. I mean, this kind of business are completely different than that was 10 years ago. And if you think, the one who has changed this kind of business are uh, you guys, geeks guys, technology guys, and of course has been the technology. Now, uh, probably this kind of business should apply to a, a better world. Um, and I think that this is, this is the, the objective of this hackathon, how technology can make people life much better. So, the question to my colleagues is, uh, I'm going to make them for probably one question common for everybody, but as you are talking about your own space of speciality, I would like to ask you one question. Uh, how will be the health in the future? Just for, yeah, just probably for you, how would be the health in the future? This is our first uh, challenge that we have. How will be the health in the future? You give us some examples, like the application in Ghana, but imagine in the next 2020, how will be the health using technology? That's the first question to you, and I would like to, to make this question to all of you in your specific size of speciality. Okay. Please. This, this mic is, wor yeah, is, is working. Right, you can, you can. So, so uh, I think that uh, you can hear me quite, quite well. First of all, uh, well, thank you for the, the question because uh, so I can advertise my, my conference on, on Friday because that's uh, about that, uh, how the future of health would be. And for sure, would be completely different because uh, up to now, we are in what uh, I call the, the regulated health market. I mean, we are talking about uh, pharmacy, about, about hospitals, about uh, primary care, but at the end, everything is, is medicine. 
how many time uh, uh, we are spending on these places, w the, 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 the people that we are healthy. We are not talking about chronic people. Yeah. So for us, any, any act on our life, the breakfast we have, the, the, if we are going jogging, uh, jogging or not, if we are using the elevator, just uh, using the, the stairs, every, deci every decision is affecting our life. And around that, there's a, a new ecosystem and a regulated health market where a lot of uh, new stakeholders would appear. We are talking about gyms, about fitness, about uh, cooking, about uh, social cooperation. So, uh, I mean, uh, even the food, the, the food sector. Uh, now they are realizing that they can help us to, 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 to stay healthy. And, and, and also the public administration can... Uh, uh, prepare the, the system uh, for us to, 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 to be healthier. Uh, for example, Google decided to replace, uh, well, or they changed uh, uh, the Cokes were just at, uh, at the front of the ice and water were just down. They moved and put uh, water just at this, at, at this height and the Coke was just on down. That, that provoked uh, a, a rise on the uh, water consumption of 50%. So, so sometimes, okay, uh, we uh, need to be healthy, but that's uh, also because of our decisions. And there are a lot of stakeholders that uh, can interfere or can uh, provoke with, with us. So j just, just to, to summary, uh, at the end, health uh, in the future will be personalized. It uh, wouldn't be a matter of uh, the doctor and the hospital. It would be something where the main uh, player will be the citizen, because if we are talking about the patient is already ill and we are talking about the, the, the patient and a lot of uh, new uh, stakeholders. And we need uh, a new re rules of the game. I mean, we need a public administration that take care that everything is uh, under control. Well, just one example, if I might tell you. Last week I was with one um, researcher on DNA on the genomic um, map of uh, human people. And he told me, well, in the next two years, it is quite possible that you can have in your smartphone your uh, genetic code. So you can go to the doctor, you can the doctor can read your genetic map, and the doctor can tell you, um, if you want to take care of these two, three topics, you have to take care of this. I mean, uh, I don't know if you know, but you know how much is code, your genetic code now? In, term, in dollars, do you know how, how much it cost if you want, you want to make your genetic code? It costs $800. In the future, it could cost $200. And you will have your genetic map here in your iPhone or your Samsung or your Nokia or whatever. I mean, you will have this, your code, in your smartphone. And you can go, and you can go to the doctor, and you can do things much easier. So this is how technology will change, for sure, the health in the future. Second question just for you, Juan. How will be the education in the future? Because we are now seeing how the mocks are changing everything, how probably the universities will have to change the way that they are teaching the students. Probably I don't know if the physical campus will exist or not. I mean, how do you imagine the education in the future, beyond the mocks? <laughs> okay. Thank you, Alberto. Well, this is yeah. really a difficult question because guessing the future is something very difficult. Hmm? But I will try to do my best. Hmm? Uh, well, I think education has already changed a lot and will change even more. But we must uh, remain a couple of things. One of the most important things that we must uh, remember is that we are social beings. I mean, humans are social beings and they like to do things <laughs> together. Hmm? So I think that despite so much technology, we will uh, usually have campuses where people come together because physical connection is much better than technological connection. Also, technological connection is very powerful. Hmm? So we'll have to find a balance among both things. Hmm? Um, so the campus of the future, I think, will be something which will be very similar uh, to an integration of what today's distance education universities are 
and what today presential universities are. In distance education have many students very far away and they have mechanisms to, to get education to them. And presential campuses have, uh, well, uh, classrooms where people come together. Mm? These classrooms are each time looser because learning management systems make a very good connection between students and, and teachers and professors. Mm? Uh, now the mocks, they are bringing much more. Mm? And so I think that at the end, both worlds will interconnect and uh, our campuses will have presential students, which are the ones which are near, but there will be other students which are also connected from the distance. And there will be a massive number of students from <laughs> coming from the distance. Mm? Um, we will probably use uh, technology very intensively with them. Mm? Well, this is on the, what will happen from the, <laughs> from the point of where we will evolve. Mm? I don't think we can, we can go farther than, than really the numbers that Mox, where we have hundreds of thousands, we may reach maybe uh, millions of people, but not go much farther than that because the world is limited. Mm? Yeah. And <laughs> one example, if, if I might add to what you say, um, there is one e experience, one, a pilot experience in Colombia. Um, which is the following, just for, for kids, just for kids. They are in the school, like everybody in the school, and they had two professors. The first professor is the one who is giving them technical, um, technical um, uh, learnings, I mean, about maths, about science, about um, literature, about whatever. And this, this professor is, is physically in the room, but he is in the corner. He's in the corner, he's seated in the corner, and they asked to the students to make him different questions. And they had a second professor. The second professor is the one who helped the kids to surf on internet, to look for the information in order to get all the information in his computer and to learn with the process, not learn with the material. So this, this is funny thing, this is a, Probably it's a pilot, probably it's an experience, but in the room, there are two professors. The one who helped him who look for information, and the one who helped him who process and to digest and to understand this information. I don't know if the education in the future will be like that, but it's a sound example. Yeah, I, I am sure. I mean, there is, oh, this is what I was going to, to come immediately. Uh, but uh, there is a, ch a shift of paradigm. In, in fact, we are changing from teaching to learning and to learn by doing, mm? yeah. in the sense, and to learn by searching in the internet. Yeah. Uh, and so the, the, the role that we have, the people who are delivering the education, is more guiding people in their trip through knowledge and uh, teaching them how to find it rather than transmitting knowledge. Mm? So the education will be much less knowledge intensive and much more process intensive. We must prepare people and really to, to, to learn new things during the whole life because they will have to, to be living with it. Hmm? Probably this is a guess, but probably it's the future. Well, talking about cities, talking about cities. Uh, well, we set some figures. Uh, people, uh, the 75% percent will people will be in the cities in the next uh, 20 years, but uh, how do you imagine the city of the future? I think that we have to make a difference between uh, developed countries and developing countries but, uh, well, the future in the city will be how it will be. Um, I don't know if it's a happy city or not, but how do you imagine the city of the future? I don't know if the city has changed so much in the, last, in the, in the, in the past 10 years or not, but how do you imagine the, the city of the future? Okay, Alberto. Let me tell you something. Uh, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really know. The only thing I can tell you that is the city is the place where things happen. Uh, and right now, we are talking about new education, we are talking about new uh, um, health, health, health. Uh, we are talking about new ways of retail, new ways of working, and this, the city is going to be the places for all these new things. So. I can tell you that right now we are working in two different projects. One is a retail project, and another one is a, is a, a working project for a company in, in, in Madrid, in Spain. And the project we're talking with that, com with that company, uh, most of the people 
they are working right now from home, from their house, house. Okay, so they don't need to go uh, to to the workplace. No, always, but sometimes because when we have a meeting, they have to go there, and when we have to take uh, to try some things, they have to go there. But a lot of time they are at home. So maybe the future homes is gonna be half workplace, half half. A funny place, half a living place. Okay, the same with the retail. With the retail, uh, you can right now you can buy all the things or most of the things by home. by e-commerce. You know, so why did you need the small shops, the re the retail? Well, you need it because you want to enjoy the experience. You want to share. You want to participate in a community where with people like you uh, that enjoy the same things, try the same things, and have the same problem than you. So that all that things happen in a place. We'll have friendly cities. We'll have healthy cities. Probably with no as much car as right now, but with a public tra transport, you know? But the, the thing we need is to create, to build a new generation of cities where our, I have one son and one daughter, they will live a better life. Mm -hmm. That's it. Well, I think that's another example probably it is um, all the co whatever, co working, co funding, crowd, crowd, this, this movement of crowd. Probably the crowd working yeah. could be different in the cities or whatever, because probably in the future we will work at home or whatever. So I don't know how will how will be future. L let me tell you one example. Uh, I think is is quite one. There is one country who who has take one decision, and the decision has been the following: uh, is not to grow as an economy, and just to replace some job positions by or with robots. I don't know if it will be so dramatic in the future. There's only one country, and I'm not, well, you can imagine the country which is. Uh, uh, but this is, this, is, this is just probably the extreme. And just for finish, it's talking about social inclusion. Well, uh, probably the, f the main figures that I gave is about the divide, is that the six in the world. Uh, urban versus rural, rich versus poor. Um, elder people versus young people, women versus women versus, versus men. Well, uh, how could you see the future? Uh, in the future, we will be much more equal thanks to technology or the inequality will keep bigger because of the technology could be in the hands of one people and not in the hands of the, the rest of one. How did you see the right. social inclusion? I think I have the, I have the, ans the current answer. I think we, we will have some uh, places with non-poverty and with no social exclusion, right? And well, what can technology do for that? And what can university and big company do for that? I believe that we have to encourage talented people to make acknowledgement a real. I have to mention to you some sort of smart application for our mobile phone where it can actually improve our, I mean, to, to avoid those poverty and to avoid those social inclusion. For example, think about the application for social dining. You have to provide a dining room for all of people in the world. Or for example, uh, digital transport on demand for disability, basically. But, or think about application for donation. Donation of whatever. Blood, food, material. That can be a nice challenge to, to, to get on. Because probably poor people cannot access internet but what is called the medium people can do. And these medium people can improve and just to transfer those technology to them. 
or for example, think about application, any people without a home. I have a home, I have an empty home in Madrid, Paris, London, empty in space, empty in space. So some smart application can just represent your African maps, how many people are available to offer the empty space. So this is my future. I mean, I would like no poverty and no social exclusion at all, Alberto. Well, that's all for our side. Um, just um, that was the, the objective of this panel, just to show you how technology can change the world. Just to show you can how um, the kick people and the social entrepreneurs using technology can change the world. And this is the challenge that we launched for Campuseros. We call it hacking for something better. Now, Victor, I don't know what is Victor is. Um, uh, Victor is here. B Victor is going to, to, to explain to you, uh, just quite quick, how are we organizing this hackathon? Well, uh, yes, uh, Victor, has, it's all your turn. I would like to thank you, my colleagues. There are all professors in the uh, uh, universities uh, in Spain. Uh, well, this is our objective. I want to thank you very much for being there. Victor, all yours. Thank you very much. So, well, I have like four minutes or something like that to tell you a little bit about the hackathon itself, right? So, we have hearing a lot how many big issues, those complicated challenges, and we are telling you that we are here not just to talk about them, not just to kind of give you the insights of why we think that we can change them, but we are here because we, th we believe, we firmly believe that we can change it right here, right now, during the hackathon, during the Hacking for Something Better hackathon. So basically, right now we have, of course, a lot of prizes waiting for you uh, in every one of the, of the categories upon 8,000 euros and 20,000 euros from the Firework Hackathon, but this is not about the money. This is about the change, right? I'm talking uh, to you that we have about, well, eight to 12 teams of participants from a, lo a, lo a lot of countries, a lot of ages, uh, starting from even 14 years old. And they are actually working. They have been working now for 24 hours, approximately, and they are already having some ideas, some challenges that are tackling right now to change these things. Just to make you a very quick example, uh, I'm wearing today a Google Glass. Many of you, I'm sure you know that. And you, do you know that the first prototype of Glass, the creator, in fact, of the first prototype of Glass was here today talking about Glass. And Vincent Surf even talked about, about Google Glass. And it was born inside a very little group inside Google. And it was an idea of an afternoon that, well, simply went through. This is what the spirit of a, of a hackathon really is about. These people gathering, these different people gathering together to actually make that change happening, make that spark around the challenge that will help you out to change things. We believe that Hacking for Something Better is exactly that. So please take a look at h4sb.org, register, look at the challenges, and form a team because we really can do something for these challenges, something for these <laughs> amazingly big issues, and we believe that you are the people that can change it. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Victor. Well, I think that um, we are pretty good with timing. Um, thank you very much again. And we will want to invite you just to see the results of the, the, the hackathon. And we will have this session next Friday. And we can share with you all the solutions that uh, different people who are working with you, Victor, and with you guys, uh, will we'll give us. Well, that's all. Thank you. And we hope we can do things much more better than we are doing now. Bye. Thank you.
know it's going to be full. That's why we prefer for more chairs.